cab is uh, the conventional Peugeot 2002 to 2006 stroke 7 uh, it's got the the little board that stands up the clipboard that you can put your, your notes under it's got a radio CD player <coughs> somewhere to put your drinks Send uh, no normal heating stuff, no air conditioning. Five speed gearbox, 93,000 something miles, so it would be 94,000, say. Electric windows, electric mirrors, it's got the four mirrors, you know, the wide one, the wide one for your motorway use and seeing what's in the third lane. Handy in car parks as well. Uh, also see the white line when you're backing up. And they're all adjusted from here. The top one in the bottom mirror left, top and bottom mirror right. Uh, the rear view camera is on when the side lights is on. And I use it on the side lights for ease of parking when I back into a place. Uh, I have put the side lights on before I arrive, just as I arrive, and then I can see what's behind me uh, for backing in. That car at the minute is about two meters behind me. Um, that's how I, I, I judge it. Okay, so I'm going to back into this space here. And you can see from the camera, there's a red car behind me. It's going to be a bit wobbly because I'm driving and doing this and this is very alien to me. I'm trying to do this all in the camera. Right, so I'm coming up now. Now I'm about a meter from that car. If I go a little bit closer, I'm now about half a meter from that car. I'll show you out the back window now. <clears throat> okay, so there's the car. And I'm about half a meter. I've got to back to open the door just a second. There you go. So there's the step and there's the car. So well maybe a bit more than half a meter, maybe three quarters of a meter. So if you say half a meter you know, you're safe, you know you've not hit it. So that's the car. You can see that, you've got the gap. And if I turn myself back to the camera, and you look on the camera, and there's the car. So you, you've got a little bit of interference. That's probably my, oh, it's my camera interfering with it. Right, so, because it's, it's a wireless camera, but I didn't put any wires through the van, so it's wireless. So that little bit of interference is this camera playing with it. So you've got a drift. So I'm just going to pull forward a little bit. Give him, don't want him having an art attack when he comes out thinking that I'm too close to his. So I'm at least two meters now. So it's a very, very handy bit of kit having the camera. You can see exactly what's going on behind you. So there we go outside showing you the car that we backed up to and then we pulled forward and you've seen on the screen third seat if you're traveling with a third passenger if you take this cushion from behind here and put it hang on one hand again and put it up like that that gives you a headrest for the third passenger so you're sitting on the seat the back and the headrest and be okay so there's the seat belt uh, it comes out of the box down there uh, it's fastened this, this bit lives in the box then this bit is three point belt so a third passenger if you have a child son or a daughter that wants to come with you or even a camping buddy it's quite a big seat so it will take an adult. Two single beds. Passenger seat turn round, driver seat turn round. To turn the driver seat round, 
you've got to do a little bit of fiddling, but it, it goes round. Uh, because the steering wheel is here, in the way, you need to wind the back of the seat forward, turn the, se the seat round, and then you can wind it back. Now that gives you two single beds. It gives you uh, quite a wide single bed there because you've got the insert what the backrest sits on in the daytime so that's quite a wide single bed and then coming to the other side of the van with the third seat coming down as a single bed so that makes two lovely single beds and a walking space in the centre to come to the, use the loo at night time that's very good I'll show it you doubled up now. So that's the double bed from the cab view. And double bed from the back of the van showing the other seat turner all the way around. I'm quite pleased with that seat turning around. Doesn't it make it look a lot of room? Brilliant. This is the small table, uh, the smaller of the two tables. Uh, to bring your attention to, there is a slight bit of damage in there. I'll stick my thumb by it and you can see it's that big. And that is the third seat with the passenger seat. So two of you, that's how me and Janio normally have lunch. Now, the larger table of the two sits in the centre of the floor. And Janio and I normally sit here together for evening meal. Three standing table with a tripod. Uh, it's got two different sizes of legs. So that one is the van leg, which is, as you can see, is a little bit large. Far better is the smaller leg, the one that's actually designed for the tripod. Now that takes the table outside. I've got the small tabletop on it at the moment, but you can put the large one on it if you so wish. We always use the small one, easier to handle. So this leg fits or lives up in this area, just clicks down into a couple of brackets, and that's the and then the other leg lives in these brackets. Not very good picture that, is it? Anyway, you get the idea. Lives in there, above the sliding door. Now the tripod foot, which is like a claw when it's closed up. You can live in here, if you so wish. This is under the third seat. Here is the seat belt. This this is the seat belt that pulls out. But there's also a tray in here. And um, you can keep stuff in there. I don't use this tray. What I do, you know, you can and watch this, you can see this. Release the sleeve down here. And that reveals the whole of this area under the third seat. Uh, down in there is the jack wheel brace tools for changing the wheel. That's down in this box and this box I generally don't carry this tray. I use this as a very large storage area. That's the electric cable that comes with the van for 240 volt hookup and the tripod leg can sit down in there and the seat belt can sit in the tray if you so wish uh, come and shut and uh, in that third seat I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to do this one I did this clicks back into you release this lever. Yeah, see if I can do it with my foot. Watch this. He says. Right, watch this. There you go. It falls out. 
and to make the bed you do that there's the bed made it's as simple as that very difficult one-handed while holding a camera but you got the gist uh, behind the seat is the larger of the two tables that's there comes out very easy a few marks on the wood here where previous owners not been so careful with it I, I'm very careful so not to touch that in here is a gas locker and cider store <laughs> take a note <laughs> take a note of the cider store right so we got whatever size gas bottle that is um, I think it's, a, it's the smallest one there's the regulator up there with an on off switch and uh, the pigtail is for collar gas you can put this small one at the back and you can put a bigger six kilo one in the front if you want to carry two bottles but that's the gas locker oh and it's got um, a metal floor where you can see daylight out through uh, the metal floor so any spillage of gas goes straight out with it being inside the van um, it's got massive amount of air air space for outside use so any gas leakage will go straight out of the van so looking at the carpets very clean carpet and underneath it is the old um, floor wooden floor effect which is also very clean so toilet uh, we've got a mirror on the toilet door and then inside the toilet door we've got the mechanism you've seen this on other videos uh, you release the clip you open this you open this you bring it back and it locks in to that there with that lock there gives you a private changing room and it folds back in to there two grommets here previous owner had a waste basket on there I've taken it off but the screw holes are there and there if you want to put a waste basket there they got a towel rail and we've got a shower curtain we've got the shower and we've got the tap for the shower here which is uh, hot this way cold that way mixer tap in the middle drained at the minute because of the leave the tap open drained at the minute because of winter got a wheel arch down there we've got the con con cassette toilet there electric flush now this was replaced this drop down sink by the previous owner there is receipts from auto sleeper uh, they they charged him for for a new sink new taps and the fitting I don't know what was wrong with the other one but there's a receipt from auto sleeper for that there's a cabinet glass cabinet it had some damage on the bottom where the glasses uh, silver stuff was coming off so there's some uh, gaffer tape along there to tidy it up but it's a, a general oh I've got a container in here you don't need that <laughs> just to put everything in so it stops it moving around when you're on the road and uh, storage that side as you can tell with a light for the toilet is there and then we've got the the hatch that opens for let your shower steam escape out of the van obviously remember to shut it before traveling I have it on a little checklist I check all around the van before I move in the bottom we have I have a carpet over here you've got the old um, shower shower whatever it's called and then there's two plug holes draining out so that's the bathroom oh it's got a soap dispenser as well that's very handy actually it saves 
finding a lump of soap every time. Shower curtain comes all the way round. So it seals the door off. It's a wet room, obviously. This window doesn't open. It's sealed off. I have seen camper vans that it's put things across here to make it another shelf. And then I've seen one with all hooks stuck on it. On, the, on YouTube or eBay or somewhere. So, you know, to make it somewhere for hanging your towels. I just hang mine on here. But uh, there's a toilet roll holder there. So that's the shower. The carpets are in good condition. Oh, I think I've said that, haven't I? No thread there, no dirt. I've had winter covers over them during the winter. Uh, you know, passenger side, nice and clean. Just put a step down there. Going across to the driver's side, and step down there. What do you see? Nice clean carpets. And underneath cab one is the rubber mat that was with the commercial vehicle side of it. That's one thing you've got to remember about a motorhome. It started life as a commercial vehicle. It's a van. Builder's van. White van man. That's what you've got to remember when you're looking at these. They don't ride very well on the road. They bounce and bump. They don't go over bumps like a car does. The engine doesn't sound quiet like a car does. It's a diesel engine in a commercial vehicle. That's the main thing to remember when you're driving one of these or when you want one of these. You will be driving in a van. Although it looks like a motorhome on the outside. The chassis and the engine. The facial up here. It's all a commercial vehicle. The commercial vehicle noises and bumps and sometimes uncomfortable riding. You go it's a bit of bad road, you'll bump and bounce over it and everything in your covers will rattle. So as a result of that, what I do is I wrap everything up. All my plates are all wrapped up in tea towels. You buy a cheap pack of tea towels, a dozen for a pound and a half in the pound shop, and you just wrap everything up. Just stops it all rattling. And I even put a tea towel on here before I shut the glass lid down for travelling. Just stops it all rattling. But that's the van on the inside. I think I've shown you everything on the inside. I just need to show you the outside now. None of these cushions are with the van. These are my own. It's, um, I buy these from the, the local sh shop that sells it, all the Indian stuff in that. Um, I just put, it's a bag. I just like the colours. Just put a cushion pad in it. But they start life as a bag. So all this stuff won't be in here. All the personal stuff. It'll be an empty van. When you have it. I'll show you the previous owner had a rack here. So there is a couple of screw holes. Um, I'm up here. I'm down the bottom. That's all that's hanging there. Just to cover the few screw holes. But there was, he had a, a, a chrome rack up there, which I didn't like. Um, oh, also up here, um, here he, there was two hooks, square hooks that was glued on. And I think they just hung the coats on them as they come in, because uh, the back door is here. And one of the hooks was hanging off, so it was pulling the... The, the whatever this is, this laminate stuff, so it's like white and horrible. So I've stuck these two little pictures here just to cover the damage. They can come off easy if you want to take them off, but there is damage behind there on this wood stuff. Oh, so while we're at damage, um, the, the, I'll show you this better from outside, but the sun has faded the corner of this drawer. And it's faded the side of this and the other side of this of the toilet. I'll show you that when I open the back doors. 
But I think that's the inside of the van done. If there's anything else you want to know, ask me. Um, I think I've showed you everything working. All the blinds work. All the fly screens, fly screens work. Uh, down under the seat, um, I showed you uh, where we put our shoes. But when the van come to me, it had this tray under here. Um, I didn't like that. It takes up too much space. Difficult to get your shoes into it. You've got to pull it out to put your shoes in. Much easier just to put your shoes under. But that tray, that tray is in there. That's part of the van as well. I don't think I've forgotten anything. So that's the van from the inside.